<clears throat> Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It's Sunday, August the 15th, 2021. Let's talk about Buatzi's victory over Bolinix. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's be critical here. You know that saying, all dressed up with nowhere to go, right? I believe right now that sums up Joshua Buatzi. He has excellent tools. He has an above average jab. He gets the knockdown in the sixth round against Bolotniks off a left hand. He ends the fight in the 11th round off a right hand, which I believe is his best punch, a right hook up top. He's an explosive puncher, right? He has great tools, above average punching power. Right? A jab that can keep an opponent away. But there's a secret. It's one you, the gambler, needs to focus on. This guy has a stamina problem. I know he's 28 years old. He's not in his 30s. That makes it worse, folks. You're in your late 20s in the light heavyweight division. You're fighting a guy who doesn't have explosive punching power. Isn't that elusive in the ring? You should be able to, with this level of jab that Buatzi has, keep him outside behind the jab. Let the fight come to you. As I've said here many times, in talking about the Larry Holmes era, and Holmes was a dominant heavyweight champion, the fight did not start until you found a way to get by Larry Holmes' jab. Here he has a guy who's game. Don't get me wrong. Bolinix is there to create problems. He's determined. He's a machine. But he's not that agile. He's not that unpredictable. He can't slip the jab. So, if Buatzi had stamina... If he had just a little bit more ring savvy, we'll call it, a little bit more knowledge, he would have that jab pumping early in the fight. He would build up a lead just off the jab. Right? The goal here is to win rounds. It's to soften up the other guy. Have the other guy getting desperate. Have the other guy taking chances. Have the other guy showing defensive lapses from the chances he's taking. Then you can show him your heavy artillery. So you have a unique situation here. You have a superstar trainer, Virgil Hunter. Right, understand, Virgil Hunter has trained many champions. Andre Ward, Amir Khan, for example. Right? And Virgil Hunter wants his fighter to throw a jab, right? Virgil Hunter sees that his guy has an above average jab, that that jab by itself can control the fight. But Buatzi can't throw the jab that much because in my opinion, he has a stamina problem. So here's what happens. You notice that he's not throwing the jab enough. Bolinix, who's looking for an opportunity, right? Bolinix wants to engage. He's a front foot fighter. His offense falls apart on his back foot. It's an interesting fight because, of course, it's Bolinix, the guy who really can't fight on his back foot, who's showing more lateral movement than the relatively flat foot Buatzi. Well, understand, Bolinix is grateful that Buatzi, at times, just stops throwing the jab. So Bolinix then gets inside and understand this is a guy looking to hit home runs. Right? He's throwing a right hand up top, folks. 
He's throwing wicked left hands. Boazzi has that time. You'll notice Boazzi's catching those shots. Right? But the right hand's getting through from time to time. So then in the sixth round, Boazzi, who has gotten by on punching power, right? He sees himself as a puncher, not a boxer. If he saw himself as a boxer, he'd be very grateful. Throwing a jab, winning the early rounds, having a lead by the midway point of the fight, showing his superior athleticism. No, that's not who he is. And understand, a boxer's self-identity, and here we're speculating, but it's what I'm going by based on my own two eyes. A boxer's self-identity has a lot to do with how he fights. So just like I could tell you that 140-pound undisputed champion Josh Taylor is going to get deep in the pocket and start throwing big shots because that's who he is, whether or not he has the superior tools to stay outside. That's how I can tell you that Joshua Buatzi is not going to spend the early part of a fight hiding behind a jab, forcing you to find him, even though he has the above average jab. So in this fight, you have some real moments. Sixth round. Buatzi comes out, Dex Bolinix. Right? Who's not hiding. Understand, Balinex is looking for him the whole fight. He decks Balinex with a left hand. Balinex goes down hard. Balinex gets up. There's still time in the round. At least a third of the round is left. So you'll notice Buatzi then goes for the stoppage. Right? That's how he sees the fight. Not on the superior boxer. I have the lead in this fight, even though this opponent's game. I've just knocked him down. This is a 10-8 round. My lead on the scorecards should almost be insurmountable. No, he goes for the stoppage. And understand, the effort doesn't last that long. He goes all out, all out, for about 35 seconds. And then he's tired. Believe it or not, Balanix actually makes a little bit of a comeback at the end of the sixth round. So then you have a unique scene. The seventh round happens, and at the end of the seventh round, Virgil Hunter, his trainer, leans over and says to him, Got your wind back. In other words, folks, in a fight, where Buatzi hasn't been throwing enough jabs, hasn't been moving enough, hasn't made this a boxing match instead of a fight, has a game opponent in front of him who really can't dodge the jab, but just doesn't have enough gas to devote that much energy to the jab. In that fight, Buatzi's trainer is concerned that his fighter has lost his wind at the end of the seventh round. So, of course, you get to the eighth round, and then you start getting, we'll call it Felix Trinidad versus Fernando Vargas behavior. Right? You see in the eighth round, Bolinix looks good. Right? Bolinix is still trying to land that heavy right hand up top. Then, of course, Buatzi hits him low. They take a point away from Buatzi. Now, is the low punch just bad aim? That's possible, right? You go for a body shot, you know, you're not exactly 100% accurate. You're throwing at a guy who's moving himself. Okay, maybe it's bad aim. Or is that body shot a by time? You know, I'm winded. I'm at a disadvantage, right? I can tell you that Felix Trinidad El Faraz fight was unfortunate. Trinidad threw low blows at opportune moments. I thought Buatzi does the same thing here. 
So, of course, the fight continues on. Bolanix is very much in the fight. At times, it looks like he has more stamina than Boatze. Boatze has the better tools. Boatze, at 100%, is the better athlete. Not so much, as he tires. So, of course, you get to the 11th round. Bolanix is landing his share of shots. Buatsi, of course, has a great right hook up top in a competitive round. Right? Buatsi, Bolanix is tiring in the 11th. But let's just say he's still upright. He's still in the fight. It's a bit of a surprise, to me at least, that Buatsi lands the right hand up top that ends the fight. So why do I say he's all dressed up with nowhere to go? Folks, how is a guy who tires going to have a chance at 175 pounds against Dimitri Bivol? Right? Bivol moves. Bivol can slip a jab. Bivol has great stamina. Let's just say Buatsi would only have a puncher's chance. Right? He's not the kind of guy who can match Bivol in stamina. Right? In that fight against a more mobile opponent than him, against an opponent with higher volume than him, I believe Buatsi, who in his heart is a knockout puncher, would just be trying to land home run shots. Let's talk about another guy at light heavy, or possibly at light heavy, Canelo. Folks, Canelo is a brutal body puncher. Absolutely brutal. That Canelo left hook to the body, that's one of the sport's best punches. Let's face it too, Canelo, who's shorter than Buatzi, in the pocket is a technician. He'd know that Buatzi's signature punch is that right hook up top. That would be blocked repeatedly by Canelo. Right? He wouldn't let that punch get through. Now, against a stamina challenge, Buatzi, don't you think Canelo would land some body shots to make Buatzi's stamina even more of a problem? Isn't Canelo above average defensively? Right? I get the feeling Canelo, who has gone 12 rounds a few times in his career. Right? The Danny Jacobs fight, for example. Canelo goes 12 rounds. Right? Canelo's gone 12 rounds. Canelo also has gotten some late KOs. I get the feeling Canelo would have a stamina advantage on Buatzi. Let's talk about Arthur Baturbiev. Now, if you go back through Baturbiev's history, you'll actually see a fight Baturbiev had where the color commentator on the telecast was Virgil Hunter, who is now Buatzi's trainer. And on the telecast, Virgil Hunter openly talked about the mistakes that Baturbiev was making, right? That Baturbiev telegraphed his punches by lifting up his legs and stuff like that. Right, so we know what Buatzi's trainer sees. Here's the problem. You can tell that to a boxer, can't you? Right, if you're training an Andre Ward, you could say to Andre Ward, hey man, look, this fighter's making these mistakes. Right, you want to keep him outside. You want to use your jab. You want to keep him off balance. You want to outthink him, you want to outmaneuver him, you want to outbox him, you want to win rounds. Now you could say that to a guy who sees himself as a boxer. Right? Understands he's not the biggest puncher in the sport. Understands the value of winning rounds. Understands that sometimes these knockout artists get tired and fade in fights. 
can you say that to Buatzi? Right? Is Buatzi the kind of guy who's going to, against Baturbiev, enter the fight and say, hey, I have an above average jab. I'm going to move. I'm going to make him miss. I'm going to hit him with the jab. I'm going to, as Teddy Atlas likes to say, charge him for the real estate. Let him understand that he's not going to get inside to win rounds for the first third of the fight. That I'm going to build a lead. That he's going to have to get desperate. That he's going to need a stoppage to win this fight. Can you tell that to Buatzi? Or is Buatzi the kind of guy who thinks to himself, hey, I'm the slugger in this fight. I don't want a high volume long fight. I myself run out of stamina by the end of the seventh round. Right? You know what? I do mean to be critical in this video. I understand Bawatsi's on the way up, but folks, he's 28 years old. Right? He's 28 years old. If this guy wants to be the top of the mountain at 175, then we're going to have to think about names. Like Bivol, like Saul Alvarez, like Arthur Perturbiev. I have concerns about this guy's willingness to box. I have concerns about this guy's stamina. I'll concede this guy has tremendous tools. That right hand, that right hook up top is a show closer. But understand, so too is Perturbiev's right hand up top. If you spend your fight just trying to set up your own heavy shots, when you're dealing with some of the heaviest punchers pound for pound in the sport, Perturbiev's on that list, Saul Alvarez is on that list. Let's remember how Saul Alvarez beats Kovalev. Folks, that was by stoppage. Right? Stoppage. Right? This is a gunslinger looking for a shootout. Right? Buatzi wants to hit you hard and knock you out. That's who he is. This is not the make you miss guy. Or the guy who's going to keep you outside until you solve his jab no matter how good his jab is. So just understand, here he was fighting Bolinix. Bolinix was having a problem slipping his jab. But yet, Buatzi didn't throw it that much. <laughs> just understand, <laughs> if you're tired against Bolinix at the end of the seventh round, if your trainer feels a need to ask you, got your win back, like Virgil Hunter asked Buatzi at the end of the seventh round, what would Virgil Hill be asking his fighter at the end of the seventh round in a fight against a Bivol? A higher volume guy who's harder to hit than Bolinux, Bolinix, right? Anyway, that's how I see it. I congratulate Buatzi. Great knockout. Um, right hand up top. Knockdowns, right? With both hands, right? First knockdown is a left hand. Second knockdown is a right hand. Understand his opponent is there. Still active in the 11th round of this fight. I have my doubts whether Buatzi has the boxing skills at this point to be competitive against Bivol, right? I believe there he would just see himself as a puncher. He would just be trying to land on Bivol. Understand, Bivol has faced punchers and beaten them. Jean Pascal, for example. I also wonder whether this guy understands that going for a knockout against an Arthur Perturbiev might be met with some resistance. If I were advising Buatzi, I would tell him, look, player, let's get back to the little things. Before we think about that explosive right hand up top, which is great when it lands, let's think about winning the slow rounds. 
Let's think about establishing that jab and winning every round in which the opponent is too puzzled to get past it, right? Fights don't have to be about knockouts. Sometimes winning a fight behind a good stiff jab is exactly what's needed when your opponent is a dangerous knockout puncher himself. In my opinion, those are the kind of things that Buatzi needs to focus on. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know he's an unbeaten fighter. I know he's an Olympic bronze medalist. I know he just got a 11th round stoppage in a fight where he knocked the guy down in the 6th round. What I want people to do is to look at that 6th round after the knockdown. Look at how Buatzi then goes for the KO. Right, folks, just ask yourself, is he winded after trying to go for the K going for the KO? Right, that low blow in the eighth round, didn't that come at too opportune a time? Right, too opportune a time. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.